Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Verified. I'm your host, Chaplain Pileggi, and I'm joined by my team, my crew. The panel is back, and they've been, we've been having a good time together, haven't we? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes, yes. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, sure. so we've been looking at um, ad, uh, social justice in the Word of God, and this is the final week. And I got to say, it's been a pretty good lesson. It's, it's provided some thought-provoking questions, and it's given us plenty to talk about. I hope it's done the same for you. We're going to dive into this very last lesson and have some good discussion. Cool? Cool. All right. So this lesson talked about Ellen White and some of the pioneers and their responses to racism and then, you know, life post-racism. And Ellen White has some pretty strong language. She called it America's original sin and she called it out. I mean, and they went so far as to say that if you they condemned this law where they they basically told the people that if you catch a runaway slave, return them to the master. Mm -hmm. They were just like, no, mm -hmm. do not do that because mm -hmm. that's in direct violation of the law of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was some really strong language. And to call it out as a corporate sin of America, I mean, she didn't hold any words back. Now, how do you guys feel like we should address issues that we see nowadays? When we think about the strong language that they employed and, and the fact that they were willing to stand up and basically tell the church to break the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel we're doing in terms of addressing ills that we see in our society? Do you think we need to do more? Do you think that, you know, we're doing nothing when we think about what they did? What do you guys think? I think we tend to speak out more on matters that are purely biblical and seemingly don't have much of as much of a tangible influence on uh, social injustice. For example, um, I'm sure you all remember where, or it still is a, a controversial topic, um, but homosexuality in the church mm -hmm. and whether or not someone can be, you know, an active member of a congregation um, and be baptized or, or just different ways that they, they could be involved in the church. Mm -hmm. um, and so you had, you know, Ted Wilson who made the statement, it was official NAD um, thing, or was it GC? I don't remember. But um, he, he basically said that homosexuality is a sin and essentially that people, you know, you can't, you can't do both. He was saying that you couldn't be baptized and both be that and, and be like a current practice homosexual. So um, man, how is that tying that in? How is that tying that in? We're talking about, oh yeah, what the, what the church um, speaks on. It's like we, we come out and it's, it's, it's I, I don't know if that was what social justice would look like, basically. Mm, yeah, the, so the way I, we I, I get went what about you're doing saying. That. I yeah, think I get what yeah. you're saying. You know, there's certain issues where I think the Bible is pretty clear, yeah. right? This is a moral issue. Yeah. So when it comes to stuff that we feel is blatantly immoral, yeah. mm -hmm. then we'll come out and make a statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. sounds like I hear you saying we almost kind of pick and choose yeah. 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 what yeah. we want to address. Yeah. And Natalie said it um, a few episodes back that, you know, we pick and choose the sins we talk about, you know, because all of them are equal, as she said before. Mm -hmm. And the one that Don said, you know, <laughs> it's been in the church for years, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I think, however, it's inappropriate to call someone out about their sexuality because that's discrimination. Mm -hmm. When you're not calling out the person who wear who wears silk and cotton together, mm. <laughs> and so we we must we must acknowledge you know what what we want to we we have to really think about how we're going to fight our battles. <laughs> now, um, from. Professor, my theology professor, <laughs> just you just mentioned about two different fabrics, all right? So yeah. since you like to use theological terms, I'm going to use one too. <laughs> that okay. was serious eisegesis right there, all right? <laughs> For my viewing audience, that's basically when you read something into the Bible or you misinterpret it for your own sake, all right? <laughs> That's the Old Testament principle. Yes, it's had its value, but um, we're probably all wearing a couple of different fabrics right. up here, all right? <laughs> no, but, but I think it's a solid point that you brought out. Yeah, it's they, true. They we, 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 no, no, no. I mean, in, 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 I, in the terms of we, we pick and choose, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Why do you think we do that? Why is it 
that we're not more vocal when it comes to issues of social injustice that are still happening. I mean, clearly these things are still happening mm -hmm. in the church, right? Because I remember the ex what you shared last week. I mean, and when you were sharing what you did, for, for those of you who didn't tune in last week, Kilan was talking about, you know, the experience that we have with certain forms of racism, even in the church. I can hear that that was coming from an experience. Like, it's, mm. it's something you had to live through. Yeah. It's something you experienced as a young black man growing up in Adventism. You saw it for yourself. So it was coming from a place. Has anyone else want to chime in? Like, why do you think we're silent when it comes to this? Even though we see stuff happening, why don't we stand out and uh, why don't we stand up and condemn or use our voices to speak up? Let's say when, oh, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but <laughs> let's say when, because I mean, let's be real. We're, we're in the midst of Black History Month, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On this campus, we celebrate it. It's all good. In different places, it gets celebrated and certain time, at certain instances in our history, folk felt uncomfortable with mm. Black History Month on campuses mm. and had something to say. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And this kind of stuff happens mm. in different places. So why don't we call that stuff out? What do you think? Like, why are we so quick to call out sexual immorality, <laughs> but not racism I, I or have prejudice? I an immediate response to this, and it's only because I thought about it um, something we talked about the last episode when mm -hmm. Jill was talking about the importance of standing up and being different um, and how the, you know, the three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow down to the false God. Mm -hmm. um, and what got going in my mind is, yes, that that should be the goal that we strive for. But I think we should also be realistic about the consequences that you may face when you do stand up. So mm -hmm. it's like being honest with yourself and knowing what could happen to you. And I think that's to answer your question. That's why, you know, mm -hmm. people may be hesitant because, I mean, you had with the Dark Ages and many other periods in world history where you had Christians being murdered uh, mm -hmm. for, for their that's faith. True, that's true. And that's an extreme um, example. But, I mean, if you read End Time Prophecy, um, some, a little bit more of that is yeah, coming down the way. pipe. So it's yeah. like, I think when, when people think about standing up for things that they know aren't popular, backlash is, of course, in my mind, something that keeps them from mm. speaking out sometimes. Yeah. And that ties in with, like, persecution even. Because just, like, everybody that's following Jesus must suffer persecution. But it's something that's so scary for us that's just like, yo, we're going to have to run to the hills and the mountains one of these days. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to have to eat. This is what we're going to have to live by. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, now in today's time, um, that may be certain person's persecution, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, instead of us standing up for that person, as Donovan was saying, we're afraid. And for me, my thing is, how is it that we're Christians, we're you know, followers of Jesus Christ, but we're afraid? We're afraid of what the consequences, do y'all not think that God will help you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do y'all not think that this is right to begin with? So it's just like for me, like even in persecution times, satellites, all those things, because I've been through a whole bunch of Bible studies where people are just like, you know, what if the satellites see us or pick us up and, you know, try to shoot us and things of that sort. But it's just like, do y'all not think God is greater than those satellites? Who y'all think made those satellites? Who y'all think made the earth to begin with? So it's just like for me, that's, that's just where my mind goes. When I think about, you know, social justice, injustice, social justice as well, um, persecution, all of that comes together in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Go ahead, Jill. I love that you said that because <laughs> um, I'm a social work major. Halle, halle. And um, <laughs> can you translate that? Translate that? I don't know you that know, means. just like <laughs> period. <laughs> but um, Jesus was the master social worker. Mm. That's mm. something that you know. Shout out to Dr. Ashley. He's been teaching me since um, freshman year, mm -hmm. and. Jesus had no problem sticking up for mm -hmm. what's right. Mm -hmm. And he had no problem doing what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he had no problem going against the tides. Um, and just to connect with you, that's because Jesus knew his God. Exactly. Jesus knew his Bible. Jesus knew his word. And whenever somebody questioned him, and they did, mm -hmm. he knew what he would say. He mm -hmm. never cowered. And I think nowadays, um, people know scripture, mm -hmm. but they don't know scripture. Mm -hmm. They don't know... Mm -hmm. 
the text, they can repeat something, but they don't know the context. Mm -hmm. And I think mm. they say things to say things. And even in the Adventist community, it's like in order to maybe Those have you. someone come right. in or have, no, but we, we know you know your Bible. <laughs> we know you know it front and back, back and front. But um, I think people like, um, Ah, oh, you made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> but basically, they 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 pick and choose what scriptures they want mm -hmm. to push forward what they have. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they look. I mean, we got a whole book here, and y'all choosing one text, Genesis, and that's all you guys know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Out. Like yeah. they don't push that <laughs> no forward. <problem. laughs> and I think just in the scope of social justice and Christianity and combining our human life and our Christian life, I think we have to be rooted in what we believe in. Exactly. And if you're really rooted in that, you won't be scared of the backlash. Mm -hmm. Even what I was saying last episode, I think people are fearful. Mm -hmm. They're afraid yeah. to even touch the fire, but do y'all not know that that man will bring you out? Exactly. Like, so it's little things like that. And I think, I don't know, I was just thinking that when you said that, I mm -hmm. think we have to be more more Christian like mm -hmm. the real definition of Christian not 2022 not 2021 not any of these times you know what I mean I think we need to continue to form that relationship with God mm -hmm. um you know what's that hymn we have an anchor oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes yes and I don't think we do I really mm -hmm. don't right, so I don't right, know I was right. just thinking about no, that no that's good that's good stuff I mean there's a couple of thoughts that came to my head as you guys were saying that um I guess I'll just sum it up with one sentence. If we're not going to stand up now, mm -hmm. how are we going to stand up later? Man. That is you know? my thing. That's and if, we, and if we're thing. not connected and rooted and grounded in our relationship wow. with God, then we're not going to have the power to stand up. Exactly. But I mean, I think there's opportunities for us to stand up right now. Mm -hmm. When we see these things happening around us in our society, I mean, Jesus told us. Remember, verified, mm -hmm. right? We're going back <laughs> to the word. You know, Jesus told his disciples. Mm-hmm. If they hated me, they're going to hate you too. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But check it. They hated the disciples and, and the believers, mm -hmm. but the believers loved each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. See the difference? Yes. That's part of the reason why the world couldn't really get with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they loved each other. They became one, and that became a testimony and a witness to the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the ways that we can get to a place where we understand each other better. Do you think it's possible? Because one of the things they, they pointed out is, I mean, look how passionate and involved Ellen G. White was in, 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 working for, um, in working for the cause. You know, she, she was instrumental behind Oakwood University and mm -hmm. so many other things, right, um, that affected African Americans in this country in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some debate over, over whether or not she was black. I don't know if y'all heard that yeah. before. Heard, yeah, yeah, you heard, heard it, it, right? Maybe she had a little but drop in there. Let, let's, you know, without getting into all that, we can say for sure that regardless, she was passionate yeah. about identifying mm -hmm. and, 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 and lifting up a group of people that needed help based right. on the evils that were perpetrated against mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's possible for us to, to for people to have this empathy for another group of people even though they don't walk in their shoes yes absolutely. why i feel i feel that way mainly because like for me it's all about relationship it's all about community it's all about unity for me mm -hmm. so it's just like if i don't understand because i'm not a man mm -hmm. so i don't understand what donovan goes through i'm not a man i don't understand what you go through chap i don't understand what keelan goes through and the same vice versa they don't understand what we go through mm -hmm. so it's just like for me I'm still going to be in community. I'm still going to be have unity with them, be unified with them, mainly because I'm go I'm in a relationship with them. I have a friendship with them, so on and so forth. So the things that they speak to me about, I'm going to take the time to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the take the time to listen to what their problems are. What are they going through? How is it affecting them? So on and so forth. And, you know, I'm going to create that safe space so that they're able to even come to begin with. Yeah. So it's just like for me, it's all about relationship. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, knowing who that other person is, because how are you going to be or try to be in that person's shoes or see what that person is going through if you're not taking the time to hear them out, right. if you're not taking the time to listen to what they have to say? That's, okay. that's key. Let me tag listen, team you. Listen, <laughs> listen, 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 that's key. Mm -hmm. Listening is key. Mm -hmm. I don't think we do that. Right as much so anymore like we start to listen <laughs> we start to listen but then 
the moment we start to feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. we stop listening. Exactly. Oh, okay, that's enough. All right, we're going down this exactly. road again. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? You heard, yes. you experienced that before, you heard that before. Mm -hmm. When we have these conversations, there's certain conversations we don't want to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. hard conversations. Yeah. I think that goes back uh, um, to the remnant church and what we need to have to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think even when you had asked the question just two seconds ago, um, it's spreading love. You know, mm -hmm. and even in one of the other lessons we discussed, I want to say two episodes back was empathy. Mm, and like true. Natalie said, even um, if you, if I don't know what you're going through, right. but I can bring myself to your level exactly. because I care. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. take anything out of me. The ears already work, you know, so just put something <laughs> into it, basically. Um, and, and I just, I think as a whole, we need to spread love. Exactly. And I think that's why people believe because Jesus took the time to go to your house and, and exactly. touch your daughter. Exactly. You know, he took time to, to sit on, on a rock and, mm. and chat, you know, he got somebody up out of a whole tree. Like mm -hmm. it, it happens. And I think, um, and I don't know, it happens. And I think that just taking the time out and showing someone you care and getting back once again to the definition, the definition of true Christianity mm -hmm. and real Christianity. And you don't get that just by reading and you don't get it just by ministering to people. You get it by truly changing and transforming your heart. Mm -hmm. And I think we focus so much on literally just everybody else and every other thing that we forget that you know, we have our hearts too, and our hearts, you know, have to be transformed as well. And yeah. God is not looking for perfect. He's not looking, you know, for you to come in <laughs> long dresses. Right, and right. Turtlenecks and, and, and ears not pierced. He's not looking for that. Hmm. He's looking for genuinity. Mm -hmm. And I think in order, just answering your question and what we've discussed in other um, episodes and lessons is, um, authenticity and yes. love and being yourself mm -hmm. and I think we I don't know I think we neglect that which is maybe sometimes why we don't want to listen and why mm -hmm. we don't want to do this and why we don't want to do that mm. um, and I think we have to just get back to the core yeah so. Jill took most of my preaching time, so I have to, I have to be very quick with this. Ahead, um, the, the lesson, to get, to get to Natalie's point, the lesson asks the question, it says, can we really be separated? Mm. And it says, in the Sons of Daughters of God, page 13, it says, God will not cover evil with the robe of his righteousness, mm. and he will honor only faithful service. And he will abundantly bless those who reveal to their fellow men in justice, mercy, and love. Mm. And that's mm. something that we need to think about. You know, uh, as, as uh, Jill just said, you know, uh, God is not looking, you know, to see how well you dress, you know, when you go to church, which is, which is nice. I think I, mean, I, think <laughs> I dress nice as well. He dresses very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's very you know, sharp. He's but, very uh, sharp. you know, he's looking <laughs> for us to show his mercy and his, and his just and only his love. And I, yeah, and you brought up a key point, both of you did, you know, and I just want to piggyback off that for a second, because like you said, Jill, there's a necessity for transformation. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the more I'm sure. being transformed, the more these things are falling away because mm -hmm. God is not, mm -hmm. God is not going to cover something that I'm holding on to. Like right. we're not going to make it into the kingdom right. if we're holding on to sin, yes. any mm -hmm. sin. And that's serious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because... Folk can get, uh, folk can be kept out of the kingdom mm. for holding on to racial mm. or prejudice, you know, racial uh, ideas or mm. holding on to prejudice. People can be kept out for that. And if we're not being transformed by God, then those things will remain and they should not. They cannot. Mm -hmm. They cannot because he's trying to transform us into beings of love. Right. Yes. So, um, Wow. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Well, we got to allow him <laughs> exactly. to do a lot of work in us <laughs> exactly. because now that we've had some time to go through these lessons, what would you say? Where do we stand when it comes to loving, when it comes to standing up and giving a voice to, do to those who don't have a voice? Are we succeeding as a church? Is there more that we need to be doing right now? And that's another aspect that came out. You know, there's... there's th we can't just think, oh, okay, Jesus is coming. He's going to end all this. Mm -hmm. What do we need to be doing right now? Well, for a personal view on that, I, I personally know I'm not doing my part 
mm. um, when it comes to um, certain things as it relates to almost like the politics of the church and who we have up and who we don't have up, you know. And so that's one of the characteristics that I can work on more as to being with people who don't necessarily look like me mm -hmm. and even giving everybody a chance because someone gave me a chance. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times in the church, that's not something that we see um, enough. And I believe that we should strive to give people uh, the chances that they deserve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else we need to be doing more? Of? I have, I have the same response as my last response relationship. Um, because every, literally everything is about relationship. Mm. Everything is about relationship in this world. That's, that's, that's literally all I can say. I mean, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. I right. mean, didn't Jesus pray for us mm -hmm. in John 17 mm -hmm. that we may be one? Uh, believers as he and the father mm -hmm. now you know that prayer was answered right yes you knew that right it was at Pentecost it was answered mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 4 the Bible says they were in such accord mm -hmm. that they came together and they shared all their possessions with one another mm -hmm. so that no one would be in need. Mm -hmm. So it was answered one time and that was done through the Holy Spirit only the Holy Spirit can do that right he wants to do the same thing again exactly we had Pentecost. That was the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But there's a latter rain that's coming. Right. And you better believe that those who receive that outpouring of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. are going to be, as we would say, creatures of love in this world. So we might as well start that work now. That's right. Allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in our hearts now. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen to each other. Be in relationship with one another. <laughs> reject this idea of putting up a facade mm -hmm. and just be in that communion with God. And right. I think that the world will see it and we'll know that he's doing that work when we start exactly. to have better relationships with one another. Man, I want to thank you all so much. You guys have been great. This has been great discussion. You brought out such good points um, and we had some fun. Yes, we had some fun. Sure did. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so we thank you all for tuning in. This has been our last uh, episode focusing on social justice in the word of God. But we'll be back to tackle some more uh, topics from Oakwood University. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you on next week. God bless you. <laughs>